Dozens of local organizers whose efforts have brought crowds that well exceeded the march's expectations and abilities. Crowds full of knit pink hats grew so large that they jammed nearly every intersection and filled the National Mall. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think... The Women's March in Washington was not built as a protest, but as a defense of rights for women, immigrants, 
LGBTQ, and people with disabilities. I'm old enough to have been around during the women's movement in the 1960s. The new government has to hear that women feel very strongly about all of these issues and that we won't tolerate a turn back. Organizers had expected only 200,000 people, and when crowds more than doubled, they had to cancel their formal procession. Instead, crowds of mostly women marched down the National Mall, surrounding streets, and even... Five, three, one, two, one. I will post, this is my commitment to you. Every day, I will post something on Facebook or Twitter. Other groups are doing the same thing. Actiongroups.net, go to them. 100daysofresistance.org, go to them. Indivisible, go to them. Lots of groups are doing this. Follow them and call. Call your member of Congress, call the two senators, and you know what? That's only three, there's five days. On the two other days, call your state representative and your state senator on the other day. I'm telling you, these calls work. When they tried to get rid of the government, the Congressional Office of Ethics, two weeks ago, we got online and the switchboard was jammed and overloaded. We shut it down with phone calls. Two hours later, they pulled back from closing the Office of Government and Congressional Ethics. That's how powerful you are. Make it part of your daily routine. What are you going to do? Wake up, number one. Number two, brush your teeth. Number three, make the coffee. Number four, walk the dog. If you have a cat, just stare at it. Number five, what are you going to do? Call Congress. Make it part of your day. Don't even think about it. Part of your day. Every one of us are doing it every day. They won't know what hit them. Number two, the second thing I'm going to ask you to do, join. Join, join, join. Join groups. Join Planned Parenthood. Join the ACLU. Join NARO. Join a group. I was thinking this morning while I was writing this up. I've supported Planned Parenthood forever. I contribute to them. I've done fundraisers for them. But I realized I've never joined. So this morning, I joined Planned Parenthood. Who amongst you will join Planned Parenthood? ACLU. Narrow. The environmental groups. Join every group. Let's make these groups huge. Huge! Bernie! Huge! Number three! Number three. You need to form your own personal rapid response team. All it takes is five to ten family members and friends. The people that you're going to call or text or send an email to on any given day where we have to move fast. Everybody here, who will form a rapid response team? Five to 10 people. Earlier, there's a group here, there's a rapid response team here from Asheville, North Carolina. Nine of them, where are you? The Asheville Nine, they've got their own name. The Asheville Nine. And I said to them, how many of you have been to a demonstration before in D.C.? Eight! Eight of the nine had never been to a protest before in Washington, D.C. Eight of the nine are new for the first time. How many here are here for the first time in D.C.? At a pro Look at this! At a protest! Look at this! Wow. Number five, we have to take over the Democratic Party. God bless the Democrats who fought with us, who've done so many good things. It's no knock on them. But if you were
coaching the, the women's basketball team twice in 16 years, my friends. We've won and then lost. We've let this happen twice now in 16 years where we win the White House, but they walk through the door. Do you gonna, are you going to let this happen again in your lifetime? I'm not. I'm sorry, but the old guard of the Democratic Party has to go. It has to go. We need new leadership. We need young leadership. We need women leadership. We need people of color. We need gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgender. I support Keith Ellison as the new DNC chair. He is a great organizer and our only Muslim member of Congress. Number six, to you from the blue states and the blue cities, don't feel alone. You have a job to do. We're going to look to you over these next, let's just say, months. I was, <laughs> I heard on the radio this morning that Las Vegas has already placed odds on how long Trump's going to last in office. <laughs> they get, they only give him four to one odds to last only six months. That's pretty good. You have to form regions of resistance. What that means is this. Let me, for the young people, let me give you a little history lesson. Roe v. Wade, that made abortion legal in this country in 1973, did not happen in a vacuum. It did not happen by itself. It happened because our two largest states in 1970, three years earlier, made abortion legal. New York and California. Because abortion was legal in those two large states for three years, they helped to create the new normal. The new normal being a woman has a right to control her internal organs and what goes on in there. It's not the job of the government. So, New York, you have a job to do right now. California, Minnesota, Massachusetts, actually all of New England, the entire West Coast, you're a region of resistance. Virginia, you're a region of resistance. In Virginia, this is how we take back the South. We start in Virginia. Form your region of resistance and what you have to do in these states. You have to create laws that show the rest of the country what it looks to have health care for all. What it looks like to not have mass incarceration. What it looks like to pass laws that prohibit discrimination in employment for gays and lesbians and others. Show the rest of America how it works. If you're a city in a red state, if you live in Detroit, God, that's painful to say that Michigan is a red state. But you live in a blue city in Michigan. You live in Traverse City, Michigan. A little town. Bernie got 70% of the vote in that little town. Form your region of resistance there. Say to the people in power, you are not going to come to my city and take my Mexican brothers and sisters away. All right, how many here? are here for the first time in D.C. at a, look at this, at a protest, look at this. Number five, we have to take over the Democratic Party. God bless the Democrats who fought with us, who've done so many good things. It's no knock on them.
You were coaching the, the women's basketball team twice in 16 years, my friends. We've won and then lost. We've let this happen twice now in 16 years, where we win the White House, but they walk through the door. Do you gonna, are you going to let this happen again in your lifetime? I'm not. I'm sorry, but the old guard of the Democratic Party has to go. It has to go. We need new leadership. We need young leadership. We need women leadership. We need people of color. We need gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgender. I support Keith Ellison as the new DNC chair. He is a great organizer and our only Muslim member of Congress. Number six, to you from the blue states and the blue cities, don't feel alone. You have a job to do. We're going to look to you over these next, let's just say, months. I was, <laughs> I heard on the radio this morning that Las Vegas has already placed odds on how long Trump's going to last in office. <laughs> they get, they only give him four to one odds to last only six months. That's pretty good. You have to form regions of resistance. What that means is this. Let me. For the young people, let me give you a little history lesson. Roe v. Wade, that made abortion legal in this country in 1973, did not happen in a vacuum. It did not happen by itself. It happened because our two largest states in 1970, three years earlier, made abortion legal. New York and California. Because abortion was legal in those two large states for three years, they helped to create the new normal. The new normal being a woman has a right to control her internal organs and what goes on in there. It's not the job of the government. So, New York, you have a job to do right now. California, Minnesota, Massachusetts, actually all of New England. The entire West Coast, you're a region of resistance. Virginia, you're a region of resistance. In Virginia, this is how we take back the South. We start in Virginia. Form your region of resistance. And what you have to do in these states, you have to create laws that show the rest of the country what it looks to have health care for all. What it looks like to not have mass incarceration. What it looks like to pass laws that prohibit discrimination in employment for gays and lesbians and others. Show the rest of America how it works. If you're a city in a red state, if you live in Detroit, God, that's painful to say that Michigan is a red state. But you live in a blue city in Michigan. You live in Traverse City, Michigan. A little town. Bernie got 70% of the vote in that little town. Form your region of resistance there. Say to the people in power, you are not going to come to my city and take my Mexican brothers and sisters away. I will stand in front of you non-violently and peacefully. The other night I asked 30,000 people in New York City who will join me to block the George Washington Bridge, the Holland Tunnel, <laughs> and the Lincoln Tunnel if the federal government comes to take our Mexican brothers and sisters away. 30,000 people say, I will do it. You have to be willing to put yourself on the line. It's that important. The next thing on the to-do list, you have to run for office. You, yes.
Chaos, you! I can, <laughs> I can see your faces. No, no, Mike, not me. I'm shy. This is not the time for shy people. Shy people, you have two hours to get over it.